Vivarium is directed by Lorkin Finnegan and stars Imogen Poots and Jesse Eisenberg. And it start it deals with a couple that are getting in, are taken by this realtor to this location. It's a suburban type of a community called Yonder. And when they get there, they are introduced to they, they end up coming across this house that's uh, basically been it's it's living in this like very quiet suburban area. And as you, if you've seen from the trailers and pretty much from the premise, they become stuck there and it becomes an endless uh, containment for the, both of them. And they start to having they start to try to uh, figure out what's going on, whether or not they're what else what all is going on in this this area that they're in, because essentially wherever they go, they keep end up coming back to the same house they end up coming back to. And a lot of strange phenomena, a lot of strange occurrences start to come hap- happening when they come across this boy that is basically more than meets the eye, so to speak. Yeah, and it's basically in terms of explaining the movie, it's kind of like it's kind of like you take suburban con Pleasantville, kind of like a Pleasantville uh, setting, like Edward Scissorhands would be in another one. Where the house is very colorful, it's a colorful atmosphere. You got the the whole like cloud look so artificial, it looks like the poster out of uh, Toy Story, which actually looks kind of clever. It makes the world seem kind of unsettling and fake. But uh, it, but like the houses are basically like the equivalent to like what you like I stated, like Edward Scissorhands and all that. The whole color scheme. But imagine just take one house and just it's the same house and same everything and there's like a million of them you don't know if the, it, it, it expands upon the horizon it goes far as i can see and they're basically stuck in this big maze and when i uh first saw the trailer to this film i will say that uh seeing that kind of setting um the way the trailers portrayed how they're stuck into this maze kind of remind me of something reminiscent of uh, twilight zone and that plays heavy in this movie, actually. In fact, I think the director was a big fan of Twilight Zone. I think he did a trip. I think, I mean, I don't know if there was an episode like this, but you can tell that he's a big fan of it because it played heavy in this film. And um, it's kind of like reminisce of that and uh, The Shining uh, with its uh, uh, unsettling feel to it. And uh, when I saw that in the trailers, I was like, okay, I'd like to give this a watch. This was actually supposed to come out, and funny enough, containment movie that this movie is about being contained and being confined. Uh, this film was actually supposed to come out two weeks after, or it came out two weeks after before the country shut down from the COVID-19. Yes. So, weird uh, setting movie. <laughs> came out without even planning it because it was shot last year. It's weird how that happened at the same time. Yeah, I definitely it's it's it was that in a way it's kind of the relevant timing, so to speak, with the way that the whole world is going on right now. And at, off topic, we hope everyone is staying safe and, you know, keeping as much uh, safe as possible with everything going on. And I didn't really see much of the I mean, I saw I think I saw the trailer for this movie when it was coming out, but I didn't really like really understand what the movie was trying to do when I got from the vibe of it. And so, when I was upon looking into it, uh, one, well, one of the pro, well, one of the things was it wasn't really marketed. This film is made by Saban Films, which is known for their low budget uh, type movies. So that was probably why a lot of people didn't see the marketing because there really wasn't no marketing. I actually found this on Facebook. Yeah, and w- but what got me interested was I liked the whole, like you were saying, with the whole Pleasantville type of vibe that it's kind of going for. And the the feeling that that and it was also inter- good to see Jesse Eisenberg kind of playing a different type of character than he was usually used to because I mean he's done some dra- some serious stuff in like some drama movies he's done before and everything and uh, he really I think pulled it into high gear last year when or is this year or last year when he did this one I heard it called uh, the Art of Self Defense and I like Jesse Eisenberg Jesse Eisenberg as an actor whether it's you know certain movies he does like in Zombie Land or other roles that he's appeared in he's hit and miss when it comes to certain other movies that he's in and i'll be honest like one of the worst 
Lex Luthor's ever, but that's on a different note. But I, I'm glad to see that he took a more, you know, different type of role than what we're used to seeing him with. And well, I would count actress is also in the same boat as he is. He, she could be hit and miss too. Her earlier stuff was really good, but then huh, then she played in Black Christmas and a couple other little low budget films that weren't all were atrocious to see watch. <laughs> Yeah, so. so I like the other actress, too. I, I've seen her in some good things that I've enjoyed, including uh, 20 Weeks Later. And um, so the cast, I will say that after upon seeing the film, this was a, um interesting movie. It was it was actually a, a fairly it was it was decent. Um, it's it's a film that's very weird, but it's hard to describe if I really go into spoilers. But I will say that the type of vibe that it's going for, it really is the type of movie I would watch in the current situation we're living in right now. And it fits that kind of mood. See, upon seeing this film, I will say that this was huh, quite the bizarre film. It, it was really trippy. Um, it, it trippy in a good way, too. Uh, I will say that uh, I I enjoyed it, but it, it is flawed. And I'll get to that in my cons. But for what they were given with this whole Twilight Zone feel, holy shit. They did a damn good job because this was creepy like that show. And again, yeah. into my pros, I will say that um, it was nice to see Jesse Eisenberg um, in something totally different. And uh, his portrayal of him slowly decaying as the story goes along, you know, because he's so confined, he's starting to get cabin fever. And he's just becoming more vault, like irritated and then determined to get out of there that he just pretty much doesn't care for his role. The way he they portray his decay is awesome. I thought he did good for what he was given for uh I mean it's not it's not a high budget film. For what he was given he did really well. And that girl, you know, that's a big step up from that black shit Christmas movie. So she did really well as the like, you know, trying to get out the situation too, but then the whole you know, where the little baby comes into play that she's got, she's stuck with, you know, do, you know, do I care for this child or do I get out of the situation? I thought she did good too. Yes, I agree. I thought that she was also really good as well. And she takes, you, you can also see the kind of like deteriorating that it, it falls with both of them and how it takes a toll on them, especially when we later have to do with this boy that they come across with and this to me i think really shows a lot of the disoriented feel that the filmmakers are going with the that they were going for as far as the direction and i have to admit that watching it it was a weird because there was a film i saw last year that came out called the lighthouse which had a similar feel like this with the whole uh contained type of area where you have basically two people that are going through similar to what cabin fever is while it's not on yeah. the same type of like you know high end like psychological level as nearly as like cutting edge as that movie is, the movie has similar yeah. vibes that I give it uh, a lot of merit for with the way that they they make it to where the longer they stay inside this world, basically it becomes they're basically stuck and there's a lot of like things that they explore. Well, not to there's some things that they they explore later on in the film that's interesting, and I thought that the movie. Like carried a lot of that vibe of being in this type of war this type of setting that they're in really puts you in that vibe of what would happen if you're stuck in pretty much this location and yeah. you're losing your mind so to speak you rather you're losing your mind or you're basically it's it's taking effect on, on your mental health and physically on your on your health as well yeah the uh the setting of this uh of the uh uh of film the setting actually plays a deep uh plays the biggest role in the story because the setting it, it, it's very unsettling and it's weird because it's so it's the it's kind of like midsummer last year where it's so bright but so creepy bright if you know what i'm talking about it i mean the location just is bizarre and it's just being stuck in, and there's no way out it just it, it, it's a freaky situation um Another thing I will say that I liked was uh, uh, the score in this was really creepy. It does play like off like heavy shining type vibe to it. So I, I thought that blended very well uh, with the film. And it adds a bit of, like I said, I'll keep saying it again, Twilight Zone. Um, it, 
there's it's Twilight Zone heavy. I noticed that, and this would it, it remind me of like what if this like if you remember from the '80s, the Twilight Zone the movie. This could be a very good segment into a Twilight Zone, and I feel like that that's what you know what they could have done in one part. Because I'll get in my cons and one issue I have. But other than that, I will say that um, when they start getting into, like, some of the more unsettling parts, like, example, the performance of the guy at the beginning was really creepy, the realtor. And then when they, you meet the boy, um, and it's in the trailer, it's not really a spoiler, but this boy, it, it, it's it's the most freakiest shit I've ever fucking seen. And it's not even scary. Like, it's not even trying to be scary. It just comes off very, ugh, like like disor disorientation type feel where he's like he's a kid but he accelerates in age so you're wondering and metaphorically is there something like alien life or something i'm not going to get into deep on the spoilers at all or any spoilers but the way he talks like he'll talk like an older person but he's a kid but then like he'll bark like a dog and you can actually legitimately hear a real bark and you can see he's mouthing and it's pretty fucking like it's like a replica type thing set, setting going on. Yeah, that's what I was I was uh, talking to you about when I was watching the film. I felt like this movie with that boy, the like his his antics that he's doing and some of the like uh, like some of the voices he does and the kind of like thing they have going on with him. It was like I was watching a cross between the lighthouse from last year and some elements yeah. of Jack, where the, basically the boy he ages faster than normal and yet he's in basically a, a, a younger kid's body so to speak but he talks like he acts like someone a lot older so to speak now, or, or you know, the whole, vice versa when he gets older the speaking of the aging thing you're talking about there is like i'm not going to go on spoilers on that but there's actually like a twist towards the end that does that whole aging thing pretty well that kind of leads you on a cliffhanger on that and yeah. it Due to guest on multiple watches, I will say that another pro I do have is the end, uh, the third act. Now this is where it starts getting really bizarre, and this girl, pretty much, it let's just say that it seems like she's going through other dimensions, and it's like this Alice in Wonderland kind of setting where she's being sucked into the 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 ground, and she's going through like like I can't explain it. I mean, you just have to see it, but it's almost like Pink Floyd's The Wall. And I'll warn you, if you are in the psychedelic drugs, do not watch the scene because it gets fucking out there. <laughs> yeah, it reminded me of something straight out of that. Or or even from a couple years ago, we saw Mandy and to a certain extent to, with the color scheme, you had color out of space from earlier this year. Something that they do with the color scheme in this movie, it, it just puts you in that kind of like that kind of like disorient, not only disoriented, but that really trippy type of vibe that. Actually, pretty worked the way it worked in context wise. I thought it was pretty fascinating. Um, yeah. And, uh, and another praise I will say is like we were saying with the with the way that the movie is trying to it has some good foreshadowing that I enjoyed as well because there's something that happens at the beginning that you pretty much call that that the, when the movie's where it leads to it becomes. I thought it was very clever the way they did it with its foreshadowing. Yeah, they did good with the foreshadowing because you had the thing with the uh, with the birds at the beginning, and it's kind of like meaning metaphorically something. You also get the uh, the hints of metaphor of like suburban life being hell and just shit like that. And then there's the obvious, which I don't want to mention because it actually ends up being that twist towards the end, which I'll get into you after I get off of the uh, review on this to discuss that. But you probably know what I'm talking about. And I had that kind of feeling that's what they were doing. And I wish we could have solved more. Now I'll get in my cons on that. But um, any other pros you want to add to it? No, other than the score, like you were saying, it, it, they actually take, like, a cue that's from the sh that's very similar to The Shining. And it's like, cue, you know, like like that, that kind of, like, ominous uh, tune that you hear from Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. They have a, it, it sounds like I was hearing it right out of the soundtrack. <laughs> And it was actually pretty creepy. I, and I, um, when the way it's directed, the way now, now I wouldn't say it would be Kubrick's version, but a lot of it is very Kubrick and this, it like level, 
but of course Kubrick would have took in a, it better by making it three hours or whatever and would have done way more than this because it becomes simpler because it's only an hour and 38 minute movie but the stuff that does happen does feel like Kubrick could have maybe like he would have watched this and said you know what this is I know this is exactly what I like but let me tweak some things and yeah. I also hear a lot of people compare this to works at David Cronenberg type level or David Lynch. Yeah. Or David, yeah. David Lynch. It's just, it depends. Like this could be all kinds of people's work. Uh, unfortunately, just, it was, you know, low budget films, low uh, director I've never heard of, but anyways, it was still be- decent, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. I'm a pros. I'll get in my cons. I say one of the biggest issues I did have with the film, unfortunately, um, now, there are things that does happen in the middle that come here and there that is really unsettling with the boy, the TV thing going on, the whole Twilight Zone shit going on with that. Just little bu- odds and ends of shit, but overall, that middle part, I got it. I did get bored at times on the pacing issue. There's a pacing issue. I felt like they spent way too much time. Um, I get that you got to give us like that family gives up. They're just going to live that life. But you gotta be, you gotta have some form of entertainment. You gotta put something in it because it gets nothing but the, him digging a hole and then she's living that life for them, and time just passing. Yeah, I'm the same way, man. Like the pacing, the way that it came across, it felt like you know you could have really built something more, like to give us something more interesting during that time off because. When you have its second act that's trying to give you that disoriented type of feel that builds up, while that can be done depending on how it's executed, it still has a problem. I still had a problem with it because they don't really like give us really anything interesting to go off of because it's a lot of the same type of rinse and repeat that we've seen with him digging the hole and then her like – well, I give it a little factor of her trying to try to cope with the boy on certain things, but – Still, I, I felt like they really should have elaborated on like other stuff going on, so to speak, to give it to give it more that vibe, to make it more unsettling, so to speak. Yeah, like you said, they the one like the part where they have her did have its moments, but it does become uh, they could have expanded where she's doing more investigation, like wondering what the hell. Well, you do get a little bit of that, but it just seems like she just copes with it more than anything. And they don't really expand upon other than it. some of the stuff is really rinse and repeat. And it gets kind of, takes you out of the mood a little bit. It isn't until the third act I felt like it kicked back up. But then another issue I have also is while that is slow at the wrong, wrong parts, it's also fast at the wrong parts. Because there's this movie, I kid you not, not even three, five minutes in this thing. And it's like moving so incredibly fast. We're I thought we were, I was already 25 minutes into the movie, and it was only five minutes. So if you were able to accomplish that at the beginning, you have all this whole movie. Why were you wasting your time, you know, and do, uh, what you could have built up on? So that was another thing. At times, it would rush, like the ending kind of rushed, too. I would have loved to see more of that Alice in Wonderland shit she was going through, where like she was going through the walls and up downstairs, just fucking bizarre shit. They rushed that. They rushed the beginning a little bit. And then another thing that kind of really confused me was the world setting. Um, I'm not talking. Uh, I- I'm talking about like the whole like. First of all, got me thrown off was at the beginning where she's at the school. Uh, it's it's a very American type school, but they, you could tell they're in Europe or UK or somewhere because they're cheap. They're driving on the, the opposite side of the vehicle. And they have the license plates that is a European um, UN type shit going on with the with the license plates. So you're led to believe, okay, they're over there. I guess Jesse Eisenberg's American that probably went over there. And but the kids were very American, and school felt very American. So I was kind of really confused where the fuck we were at. <laughs> yeah, well, from what I read too, that that's an interesting topic because apparently the film was a. It was actually a uh, it was a co-production between Ireland, Denmark, and Belgium, and so it was an international co-production. And you can tell that a lot of the locations they shot were in a lot of those locations. And so, yeah, when you look at it, when you really st- when you look at it, when you pay attention, the vibe of them being in a sep- in like a different country or something really makes it feel inconsistent with like where we're at in the setting. 
And now, the, the, my my con with that too, as far as like the actual setting we're actually in, it would have been interesting how if they maybe would have given us like some more like uh, things to go off of because the, the setting itself it reminds me a little bit of like if you took the Truman Show, how that movie was basically a, a big dome of a made of, of a uh, set of a you know a, one location so to speak, but it's like under a dome. It would have been more interesting yeah. if they really expand more of that, and maybe we had to see some like other people come in or something like that. I mean, they they do reveal part of it like, at the end of it, but it really could have like they they could have really expanded a lot more than what we were given. But given the style, uh, yeah, there's it, it a lot more of stylized over its narrative, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. The style, the the trying to be too artsy and stylish was, well, it it was good at the end, like you said. They did they could have went better as far as a big narrative, a better story, and a better twist. And it was still good what we were given, but it could have been a whole lot better. But uh, there's also a thing that I felt like the film also did a little bit wrong. Now, I'm not saying that I, a lot of people like ambiguous films, um, very mystery, you think of your own type films. And I, 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 by any means, I, I'm not bashing that type, uh, those type of movies. Halloween was very successful at doing it. Uh, I do enjoy those, but I do feel like this film stayed a little too mystery for itself to not give us practically anything. I mean, there was that thing I caught, you know, I don't want to say it, but it just, it was very like, boom, that was it. Like you could have done so much more than this. Like give this to like somebody who is very, like you could have gave this to the director of Midsummer, and or you probably would have had fucking world or you could have given it to the director of the lighthouse because that's why i still prefer a movie like the lighthouse over this was because even though that film was a more secluded area similar there was still a lot of great you know the way that the movie kept its pace and the way that it kept a lot of things that were unsettling it still got me more interested in this vibe they were going for even though it was a very one location type movie now, I will say another couple little key little things that I did uh, going back to like a couple little pros real quick was like the part where the boy thing had that thing and then like that guy screeching and stuff. That did kind of sound kind of creepy. It kind of uh, that loud screams from the um, uh, Annihilation. Yeah, I was just going to say that reminded me so much of that. I was like, oh, wow, that's giving me flashbacks to Annihilation all of a sudden in a good way. Like, it was very creepy, and it was very, like, holy shit, you know? But other than that, you know, ain't much to say. I will say that uh, I do feel like this film should at least, you should, people should give this at least a, one watch. I mean, it is going to be a very divided film. I did see a lot of people bash the hell out of this film, saying it is absolutely pointless to the oblivion. Why was this film ever made? Then you have the ones that are saying, you know, it was actually pretty incredible. I'm more middle ground on this. I'm in the rarity part because it. Uh, I'm usually am on divided films like this. But uh, other than that, there ain't much I can say. Um, I I feel like I'm more comfortable giving this a grade of a um, uh, high average Joe in the film freaks meter. And I say the reason why I say that is I felt like they wasted the time on certain aspects on the pacing. And that long drawn out scenes of just it, it did kind of get to me on the boringness, and I kind of took me out of the mood. And when a film takes me out of the mood, that kind of ruins it a little bit. No matter how good the spice up ending is, I still got to They wasted their time in that big chunk, you know. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Like I, I'm the same way. The movie is a high average drill for me as well. While it did make up with some of its aspects as far as like you know, certain metaphors that they bring in and certain things they kind of, you know, bring in toward the end. I felt like because they did, they, they kind of like, well, not really wasted, but like they, they made it too like quick for it to be resolved, so to speak. It, they, they should have gave us a lot more than what we were going for with it. But with that being said, overall, I still think it was a decent watch. And I do, I would at least check it out. If you, if you want to check out, just, you know, rent it or, you know, watch it, anywhere for at least at least once it, it, it is something i would recommend yeah so for those of you who have also seen vivarium let us know in the comments below what you thought about it and we'll see you in our next review and stay safe yeah